welcome everyone to the restart of the A16Z Research Seminar Series. Um, very happy for our first talk this fall uh, to introduce Sasha Spiegelman uh, at Aptos, uh, who I think will be enlightening us on recent advances in DAG-based consensus. So Sasha, all yours. All right, so uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction and uh, please feel free to stop me at any point for questions. I think it's much better if we do the questions through the presentation and not at the end. Uh, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to lose anybody. <laughs> okay, cool. So I will talk today about DAGs and how they meet, well, they meet BFTs and how we can use them to solve like a consensus very efficiently. Before I will jump into that, I just thought, just a single slide of like how a single shard architecture look like. Like usually we have these, I think three main components that, uh, that each blockchain has, which is a consensus execution and storage. We have some more, but these are the three main, the, the three main parts. And uh, if we have a pipeline architecture, for example, like the one we have in Aptos, then the, your overall system performance will be as good as the, your weakest link. So in some other work, we show that uh, we can execute once 160k transactions per second via, by block STM. By the way, if you have ideas for the next seminars, you can invite Rati to give a talk. It's, uh, I think he will be interested. And uh, magically, we got the same exact number, 160k TPS with Novel and Task when we implemented our consensus. So there must be some law of physics here um, with this like, magic number. And uh, okay, and then today I'm gonna focus on consensus and uh, sh yeah, and show you uh, the duck based our duck based approach. <laughs> so this is a joint work with George, um, George, Neil, Edith, Lafteris, Oded, and Alberto. Uh, we were all on in Aptos. Uh, it was all started in Novi Research. I think George, Lafteris, Alberto, and myself we were there. Neil and Oded were our interns, and the external collaboration with Edith. And uh, yeah, this this summarizes our our work we did in the last two years, which published in free 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 venues, free conferences. So we started with all you need is DAG, where we showed the foundations how we can use a DAG in order to implement um, optim um, um, asynchronous atomic broadcast on top of the DAG with zero overhead of communication. We achieved optimal resilience in terms of complexity. complexity is, it is post-quantum safe and it's order one latency. This was the theory of this approach. <laughs> then in then Novel and Task, we, which was published in yours is this year, we actually show how to build this DAG very, very efficiently. And Bullshark is, is our latest uh, latest protocol in which we uh, which has the same property as all you need is DAG in asynchrony, but it also has a fast path um, that reduces the latency in the common case. And we also also show how to practically garbage collect, uh, achieve fairness, and chain quality. <laughs> and it's important to note, I think, that this this approach is currently implemented in several blockchains. Um, for like, for example, Aptos, we are implementing it. Celo, I think, Mistern already integrated it in, into their code base, and also Somalia. Okay, so um, what is a DAG? What I mean, what I what do I mean when I say a DAG? What, what is a DAG for me? So we assume a round based DAG which was first introduced by Aleph in AFT-19. And uh, think of it as, um, we, we, it's a structural DAG. So we have rounds and uh, we have in each round has, has at most N nodes, um, at most one node per validator. And, uh, and an important property here is that is each node refers to N minus F nodes from the previous, from the, from the previous round. Um, and I, I, I will explain in this talk how we build the DAG, but first I want to introduce what, what is a DAG. How, what, what do I mean when I say a DAG? So this is the DAG we are considering. And, uh, and each node, each node also, also carries the information of uh, the, transac the transaction information that we want to order. So it's very symmetric protocol. Every validator just tries to add a node in the DAG. This node has either the transaction or some metadata information about these transactions. And it needs to refer to N minus F nodes in the previous round. And this is how, and this is, this is the DAG, very simple. And now the, our work, we can divide our work into two. First, novel is 
how we how we how we build this dog very efficiently. Okay, so this is a, in, in a storm and storm and way to build a dog is, is to use reliable broadcast. So I, I have my node, I broadcast it, I include my transactions there. Then I let's say in round one, this is what I do. Then I wait for n minus f um, other valid to deliver n minus f nodes by other validators. And then I'm ready to move to the next round. I prepare a new. I prepare a new node. I refer to this with. A, I refer to this n minus f nodes from the previous round. I add my inform, add the information about the new transactions, and I broadcast this. And this is how it works. This is like a strawman solution. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about now and how we do it. But this is just to give you intuition what what the DAG is. Okay, so. <laughs> So this was novel. This is like half part of the job of the work. The second part is the protocols that we run on top of novel. And we we started with Dag Rider, then we have Task, which is actually a practical implementation of Dag Rider, and the latest is Bullshark. <laughs> and all these protocols, they take the they take the Dag. Uh, oh, the so sorry, the, the DAG can, I, yes. can I interrupt for a sec? Yeah. I just want to make sure, like your, your discussion around sort of the straw man reliable broadcast. I'm just trying to connect that to like the picture on the slide. So sh should I think about like every single validator is like making a, a block proposal in a round and everybody's voting on everything or how do I connect those two? Yeah, sh sure. So there, there's no vote, there's no vote processing here at all. So I am, I am a validator. I just prepare my node and I reliably broadcast it. And once you deliver it, you just add it to your DAG, to your local view of the DAG. That, that's all. Think about it like with a reliable broadcast is, is, is to guarantee non-equivocation and to guarantee that everybody will eventually receive all the nodes. But uh, I, simply, I, 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 I can simply say like, I, send the DAG, I send the node to everybody and everybody get the node and add it to their local, local view of the DAG. That's, that's all. Okay. Yeah, okay. So this, this protocol is DAG Rider Task Bullshark. We, we have the DAG. Each one of us has a local view of the DAG. It can be slightly different from each other because of the asynchronous nature of how we build the DAG. Uh, because some of us might deliver a node, while others may still don't deliver this node, right? Everything is like asynchronous. And then we, the, the magic here is that we, we, look at this, uh, we look at this DAG, and the DAG provides causal order, but it doesn't provide total order. But we look at it, and without sending any extra messages, no extra communication, we can just totally order all the nodes of the DAG. And uh, and and have all the validators will will, will will achieve the same total order without any communication, just by looking at the DAG. What we basically do in this approach, if you think about it from a high level, we have the problem of solving consensus, and we reduce it into two, in, into two problems. So first, we we abstract away all communication, all the system aspect, everything into just building this DAG as efficiently as possible, which is uh, which is which is like a well-defined thing that you want to build and which is much easier than build a full consensus. And then after we have this, then we run some local algorithm just to order these nodes of the DAG and get the full consensus that we want. And um, yeah, and today I want to focus on, on Bullshark. I'm going to focus on Bullshark today. And Bullshark, Bullshark, has, uh, Bullshark has, like I said before, um, Bullshark has all the properties of Dag Rider, but it also had a, um, a fast path to reduce latency in the common case, in the case that uh, in, the in the synchronous periods. So this is the full Bullshark, but we at some point this and this is also what is published in CCS. And um, but at some point we realized that uh, that might be very interesting, and people might be interesting in just the simple version of the partial synchronous version of Bullshark without the complexity of the fallback and the asynchrony. So we decided to, 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 to provide a standalone protocol of just the partial synchronous version of Bullshark, and this is what I'm going to present today. Just uh, the, 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 simple, the simple version, but maybe the most practical one. So, yeah. uh, so in the step where you go from the DAG to the total order, um, yes. so I'm wondering how I should think about that when like different nodes have slightly, you know, when some of the blocks have been received by some but not all nodes. Is it that like different nodes are gonna apply this local thing and it's guaranteed to be like a prefix? One is guaranteed to be a prefix of the other or just like a subsequence? Yes. Yeah, exactly. One is guaranteed to be a prefix of the other and one okay. I de once I deliver more nodes, I will, I will like, uh, increase my prefix, but always the prefixes will be always like uh, prefixes of, the, of each other, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this makes sense. I'm curious about what 
the practical impl uh, implications of the complexity associated with asynchrony versus partial synchrony are in this case? Are there uh, effects on latency or, or others that make the partial synchrony more appealing? It just, no, it's it's the same. It's just the, it's just the in order to grasp the, the logic of how we interpret the DAG, it's a, the, the, the fallback, the asynchronous fallback adds a lot of complexity, but in terms of practical implementation, it's the same. It's a, we build the DAG exactly in the same way. It just uh, how we look at the DAG and what we, I, I, yeah, I, I've explained the partial synchronous version and it's pretty simple, but in order to add the, the fallback, it's just a little bit more complex. But once you, if you understand it, if you're comfortable with it, you can implement it and you will get the same, the same performance during, during synchrony and you will have also have the, the asynchronous fallback. Yeah. Thank you. It just, I think, I think so far everybody who uh, in, implemented it were a bit scared of the details of the fallback. And, uh, but yeah, we, we are not we are going to do the, the full bull shock. That's that's the plan. Um, okay, <laughs> so yeah, let let me actually describe how how we do it, how we how we order the DAG. So as I said before, um, each of the validators here is an example, right? Each of the we have different validators. They might have slightly different views of the DAG. <laughs> so, but the important property here, which we which we get from live broadcast and we also get from our novel implementation is the non-equivocation. What it means that it's, it's fine. Some, some of the validators, like in this example, in this example validated four, might deliver a node that validator one uh, haven't delivered yet. Okay, it will, it will deliver it in the future, but not yet. However, if, if, they, both, if they both deliver the same node, the non-equivocation guarantee that they deliver exactly, that the nodes are exactly the same. It means same transaction, same information about transactions, same links to, previ to, previous no to nodes in the previous round. And if we apply this logic recursively, so, so the nodes they refer to are all also the same, but the same non-equivocation property. <laughs> so when, what we get is that we, if we deliver the same nodes, then the entire causal history of these nodes in both local views of the DAC is, 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 uh, is the same, is exactly the same. And this is an important property because we're gonna imply deterministic rules to order the DAG. So the fact that we see the same, the same, the same causal histories will just imply that we're gonna, because the rule is that will be deterministic, that we're gonna order everything in the same order. Okay, <laughs> so, so the way we are interpreting the DAG is, is the following. Each of the validators, again, has its local view. And then we have, uh, we divide the rounds into odd and even. And in this example, I start, I, I, I count from one. So that's, and not from zero. So, so in every, in every odd round, we'll have a predefined end call. Now, end call, you can think about it as a leader. I just prefer the end call name because this, they, they don't really do anything. They don't send messages, nothing. It's just, it just the node in the DAG. So I think end call is a better name, but uh, it's the same same idea. So each, each old uh, round in the DAG will have a predefined end call. And the, and the nodes in, the, in, the, in even rounds, the, these are the votes. And, uh, and and the goal is here, like, first I want to decide which which encores I'm going to I'm going to commit. And then uh, hopefully not like I, every all the validators will commit to the same nodes. This is the goal, how to commit the so, so how to commit the same encores. And then I'm going and we're just going to go one by one these committed encores and apply some deterministic rule to causally or to, to all the, the code to totally all the causal histories of these nodes. So this is what this is like. This is what we're gonna do, and this is how it works. So the commit rule is very simple. <laughs> we commit an encore if it has f plus one votes. So in this example, we cannot commit encore a one because we have only one vote. Remember, a vote is a, is a node that have a, a have a link to the encore. Okay. However, a two. The, the second encore is committed because we have three votes and three is bigger than f plus one. And um, in this example, n is four and f is one, so we can commit a two. So the commit rule is very simple. Now, now again, each validator has a slightly different view of the DAG, right? So it's possible that even though validator one never, not yet delivered the node in round two from validator four, Validator 4 already delivered this node. So validator 4 sees two votes uh, on A1, 
and and therefore commit to day one. <laughs> so when when we go back to validator one for to his logic, he needs to we need to make sure that that he will order a one before a two because this is what we want. We want all the validators to all, all the encodes in the same order. <laughs> okay, so this is the goal, and uh, of course what we are going to use in quorum is quorum intersection. As this is this is like the main trick in distributed computing, especially in consensus, right? So of course, quorum intersection, <laughs> and uh, and here is in here what in here it here is how it works. So Sasha, remember, so, f plus one. Yes. So I, I didn't totally follow the right half. Of it. So why why does validator four commit a one? Because you can see that validator four has two votes on a one, right? The the node in of validator four and the node oh. of validator two. In one, two. Gotcha. So that, that's the F plus one, not the N minus F. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's the F plus one. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's exactly it. The F plus one. So the vote is F plus one. And in order to advance round, we need N minus F. So we'll have quorum intersection between this F plus one to commit and N, F, N, F plus, and N minus F to advance. Okay, so with this exa exactly with these two properties, what we get is that if an n call, some n call a, say a, committed uh, is committed by some validator, then all future n calls will have a path to at least one vote for a. I, I will in a second demonstrate it with an example. That, but th this is what we what we get, and 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 as a result, all future n calls will have a path to n call a. So here is how it looks in an illustration. <laughs> so A1 was committed, and now A2, it, ne it needs to refer to N minus F, in this example, three nodes, right? This is how we advance and build the DAG. So in this example, no matter which of the nodes it will, it will refer to, either, either the one from validator 4 or the one from validator 2, it will refer to a vote to A1, and thus a there will be a path between A2 to A1. All right, this is exactly the quorum intersection f plus one to commit and minus f to advance. That, that's the trick here. And, uh, and as a result, we get this colorway that, that, that the opposite. If there is no path from some future uncle a prime to a, then the no honest validator committed a. And uh, well, just one second in this node, that I, I showed you an example from a1 to a2. But you can imagine that the same applies for any future encode. The same, the same, exact the same quorum intersection. Okay, so this is the corollary, and now with this corollary, I am ready to present you the full Bullshark protocol on one slide. <laughs> so, so this is how it works. <laughs> this is a local view of some validator, say validator one. <laughs> so, and now I, I'm validator one sees the DAG and, and did, now he wants to totally order all the all the all the vertex, all the nodes. So it starts from n call one. Can he commit n call one? No, because there is only one vote, one, and f plus one in this case is two, so he cannot commit n, n call one. Ankle two, he doesn't. He has zero zero votes to ankle two. He doesn't have. He doesn't even have ankle two in his local view of the DAG, so he cannot commit ankle two. However, ankle three can commit. Oh yeah, and uh, it, it can commit ankle three. Three votes more than f plus one. He can commit ankle three. Now what? Uh, now what we need to do? Um, by the by, we apply the corollary from before. What we do? We, we simply check whether there is a path between a three to a two. In this case, there is no path. So by the colour, no, no, none of the validators committed A2, so it's safe, it's safe to skip A2. We're not going to order A2. <laughs> However, there is a path between A3 to A1, which means that some one of the validators might have committed A1. So to be safe, we decide to order A1 before A3. And, and, and now after we do this, um, in this example round, one is the first round, but imagine it was some round, it was, there were some rounds before. So we need to recursively apply the same logic and, and, and try to see if there is a path between A1 to A0 and then to A minus one until we reach an ankle that we already previously ordered in the previous prefix that we ordered. So, so um, 
And, and the intuition here is, remember I told you that if, if we all deliver A3, ENCODE 3, that all the causal history, we, we all agree on the causal history, right? Okay? We, we, because of the non-equivocation. So if, when we will go and apply this logic that I currently apply to in, by validator one, all the, all the validators will apply exactly the same deterministic order. So they will agree on skipping A2 and they will agree to order A1 before A3. So it doesn't actually matter if A1 was really committed by some of the validators or not. It just, we will all, we will all order A, A1 before A3. It's just important that if somebody might have committed it, that we, that we absolutely must order A1 before A3 to be safe. Now, now the, the, the hard task is like we did it. We, ordered, all, we agreed on the order of the anchors. Now what we need to do is just to go one by one and commit the causal histories of these anchors. So in this example, round one is the first round, so A1 doesn't have any causal history, so we don't need to alter anything before A1. But then we go to A3 and, cause, and, and apply some deterministic rule to causally alter all the nodes and that, 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 yeah, in the causal history of A3. So that's a good question. Yes. So you, yes. you talk about deciding on an ordering of the anchors, but I mean, is, is it the case that they're always ordered by round and you're really just deciding on the subset of anchors that you're going to include or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, they are okay. ordered by round. I just need to decide which I, which I order and which, which I don't order. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I, I use the order to the same. Yeah. But you, you got what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you just yeah. decide which to take and which to skip. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, that's 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 the whole bullshit um, protocol, the, the partial synchronous version. Like, um, if you like, any questions, or I can can I move to the forward? I have a quick question. So, how did we pick the anchors, and also when did we pick the anchors? Yes. So so the anchors are uh, predefined. We all we need uh, to uh, just in a just similar to any other partial synchronous protocol and in, in which the leaders are predefined, right? So here as well, anchors are predefined. So there is some mapping, known to all mapping function between a round number to an anchor. I mean, so it's not unlike just choosing leaders in a rotating leader kind of protocol, right? Or I mean, the, the easiest way to do is to just assume we have a mapping, but uh, we don't have we don't have any randomness here, so it's in one way or another we will need to somehow deterministically a priori agree on it. it. We can try to use some information from the duck to do it, but it's still it's no randomness, right? So it will it will be determined. Are the validator rewards different for whether or not you were an anchor or it's just that's that's I think that's a separate question. This is like an incentivized mechanism, right? How to incentivize the protocol? Um, we I I don't have an answer to this. We can come up with different approaches. This is actually an interesting question. We haven't think about it yet. Here is just a protocol. We assume you know and 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 validators f are out of which f are Byzantine and the rest just follow the protocol. But yeah, of course, if we want to, we will need to, at some point, we will need to, to solve the incentives problem. Yeah. It just, uh, I think it's, it's, it's out of scope here. But so it's an say, interesting problem to look at. So when you say order anchors causal histories, you literally just mean like look back in the DAG and do it lexicographically or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. then, and then the kind of you have enough consistency that any two different nodes that have committed to A three will both have the same kind of histories back. Is that right? We'll have yeah the non the the non equivocation of the DAG guarantee that we see exactly the same cause of yeah. history. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you for yeah, very good questions. I I I will move forward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk a little bit about the properties. What we get here. So first protocol, so first property that we get from free for free is chain quality, because every node in every round in the DAG has n minus f nodes, out of which at least f plus one, at most f from Byzantine, so f plus at least f plus one are from honest. Then the chain quality is, is, is uh, that we get is at least f plus one out of uh, divided by two f plus one, which is more than half. And uh, so more than half of the nodes are proposed by honest uh, by honest validators, and this is actually proven to be optimal. 
in partial in synchrony and asynchrony and partial synchrony and if we and about film i also want to talk slightly about fairness and garbage collection so what i mean by fairness is that if we have this uh, slow validator in australia that nobody ever wait for he always like came late to the party because everybody already moved forward because everybody are closed then it's possible if we don't do anything then we just move forward with the faster n minus f and it's possible that in slow validator will no, never be able to add this node to the dag and does never be able to add this transaction to the ledger so in order to solve it we introduced weak links and this is uh, actually we introduced it in the, in the first paper and all, all you need is Doug to solve the atomic broadcast protocol uh, problem. So what you mean, a weak link, a weak link is, we, is only for this purpose. We, we never use it, we don't use it for the consensus logic that I described above. These links are just to, um, to refer to nodes that otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't be included in the Doug. So when we go and order the causal histories of the anchor, we also order the, the, the nodes that are referred by weak links. That's a, a very easy trick to guarantee fairness. But the problem is with this trick is that, is that if we, if we in, during, in asynchrony or during asynchronous periods, uh, if, we, if we also want garbage collection, and we do want garbage collection because otherwise the, pro the, proto the protocol is not practical, then, then we, cannot provide, we cannot provide this. We cannot keep, like, uh, we cannot keep infinite DAG. Right, because we need to garbage collect. So uh, it's actually yeah, it's actually easy to see that we cannot have this mechanism, this perfect fairness together with garbage collection. <laughs> so what we decided to do in Bullshark is that we provide garbage collection always. We always garbage collect the DAG. We keep the memory uh, bounded, but uh, but we but we guarantee fairness during synchronous periods. So so we keep the weak links for a while. And then if you, if you are just fast enough, um, not, if you are not too slow and the period, then you will be able to, will be added to the, to the DAG. Otherwise we garbage collect you. So um, this, is the, this is the sweet spot that we found. Fairness during synchrony and garbage and always garbage collect. And uh, yeah, about garbage collection. So this is another advantage of the round-based DAG. So if you're familiar with the, the earlier work on DAG-based consensus, like Hashgraph, one of the reason uh, they yeah they weren't I think widely adopted is because they have this garbage collection problem. Um, any any node could refer to any node in the past, and then you it wasn't clear when you can garbage collect the 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 graph. <laughs> so here everything is round-based. And uh, together with consensus, we can just simply agree, starting where I, we garbage collect everything below some round. And because we have consensus, we all agree on it and we all do the same. So it's, it, it's safe. <laughs> so, so very roughly on the, I, I can explain. So uh, every node in order to garbage collect, we will add another, uh, we'll add a timestamp. A validator will, uh, besides all the other information, we'll also add a timestamp. And uh, then, then we, when we come and order the causal history of an anchor, then we will need we will compute the the timestamp for a round. So the, and we do it by ta by taking the medium of all the nodes. This is a this is a standard trick to make sure that the timestamp comes from an honest party. And then every round will have a timestamp. The leader will also have a timestamp from its parents. And then we just decide. Okay, we will garbage collect all the rounds with timestamp timestamp which are far more than delta from the encodes timestamp and that, that's all very simple mechanism and this delta will also det de determine how fast this, this slow validator needs to be in order to be not to be garbage collected and included in the, in the, in the total order um, <coughs> okay so just to conclude bullshark <laughs> I hope I convince you that this is extremely simple protocol <laughs> It has no view change, no view synchronization, none of this uh, mechanism that add external complexity. It is uh, only one type of message that broadcasts the node, and that's all. It's little less, <laughs> so it, it's allow for perfect load balancing and network utilization uh, while building the DAG, and it provides chain quality for free and uh, fairness during uh, synchrony and garbage collection. And uh, if there are if there, if there are no questions, I will move forward to novel. But I will pause for a second just to to check. Sasha, what did you mean by fairness exactly? Was that similar to chain yeah. quality, or what did that mean? 
Yeah, so, so chain quality means that um, chain quality is a safety protocol, right? So uh, by the definition of safety liveness protocol, so uh, we, we check how many, how many nodes out of the total number of nodes were proposed by honest validators. This is chain quality. Fairness means that he, all the validators will have a chance have a chance to be added to the to the to the DAG. So if I'm slow, if I'm a slow validator, I will be added. It's not like I yeah, I will not be ignored. And and, and fairness, you, you wrote that's an optimistic property or that's sort of guaranteed. I missed that. Yeah, so sorry, yes. So I probably I haven't explained it well. So so fairness, we can guarantee fairness. Uh, always uh, and then and then satisfy the atomic broadcast protocol but then we will need to able to sacrifice garbage collection because we will not be allowed will not be able to garbage collect the dog in the worst case uh, during asynchrony so we don't want to sacrifice garbage collection so we slightly sacrifice fairness so we provide fairness only during uh, synchronous periods gotcha okay thanks mm. <laughs> okay, so I will move to, to Narvel. As I said before, Narvel is the system. I, so far, I explained to you, uh, given a DAG, how I totally order it. Now I'll explain to you how we efficiently build, build this, this DAG. Um, this is uh, using Narvel. <laughs> okay, so if we, if, we, if we look at current designs, so monolithic protocols like uh, hot stuff, like PBFT and others, they are, they are sharing data, the, the transaction data as part of the consensus and try to optimize the overall message complexity of the consensus protocol. <laughs> what it means is that if we, use, if we look at the typical leader-based protocol, that we have the leader, the leader sends the data to all the other replicas, the replicas check, uh, just sign, the, sign something and send it back to the leader, and then the leader will again send, the da send another data to the, to, the, to the other validators, the validator will sign, send it back to the leader. And what we have here, if we check the resource, ut resource utilization, is that the leader works very hard, he needs to keep broadcasting the data, while the, others, the other validators are almost doing nothing. They'll just sign and, and, and wait for the leader to, to send the next data. So, so clearly the leader is the bottleneck, and uh, the the key the key the key observation that we do in Novel is that in order to scale a BFT system, we need or any consensus system it doesn't have to be BFT. We need to decouple data dissemination from metadata from meta from the metadata ordering. So, um, on a high level, uh, the DAG that we are building. It is not will not will, um, does not contain the actual data. It con it contains the metadata, what we call proof of availability. So so what we do what we do in a high level is that the validators they stream they stream the data outside of this process of building the DAG. Just just rough, just stream raw data to each other, and then they will obtain proof of availability. Like if I if I stream you that I stream data to everybody. And then the validators, they get the data, they persist it, and then they, they send me back a message with a signature saying that I have the data, I, 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 stole, I promised to store this data. Now, I, I collect a quorum of these signatures, and these signatures, this quorum is what we call proof of availability, and if I take this quorum of signature and I show it to some other validators, the validator, even though he locally doesn't have the data, he, he, he can be assured that he will be able to get the data la later because enough honest validators store the data. Uh, question? No, okay. So, and then we take this proof of availability and we, and we, and we build the DAG with them. So we decouple the data dissemination from the, from the, from the metadata ordering. So, so this is the key observation and this is how it works in Novel. This is the architecture. <laughs> So each node in Narvel has one primary and a number of workers. And the workers, they, they can be processes on the same machine, but they can, we can also think of a cluster and then a primary as a machine and each worker is a machine in order to, this is a perfect, a perfect architecture to scale out. We can throw in more machines and we can will be able to scale out because the, the expensive part is just to stream the data. So we can just add more workers, more machine to stream the data. Ordering the metadata is actually very cheap. 
So this is how it works. The workers, they get transactions from clients, stream of transaction, and then they stream them in batches to the other, to the other validators. Just workers talk directly to workers. Then they will, they will take digest of these batches and pass it to the primary. And the goal is the, of the primary is to build the DAG of these digests. <laughs> and the way it works is the following this is the the algo this is the primary uh, the prime this is the primary protocol so the primary prepares a block header the blo a block header has uh, references to the previous nodes in the dag as before and it all and but instead of having this transaction it has the it has the it has the digests now now it, it will send the, it, it send it, the primary sends the headers to all other validators. The validators make sure they they persist the data behind the digest, sign it, send it back to the validator. The validator uh, aggregate it into a certificate and send the certificate back to all the validators. Now all this mechanism, this is one round on the abstract DAG that I that I used to describe you the protocol before. This 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 is one this is one round. Um, yeah, and th this is this is basically the high level idea of how of, of how Nargol works. And uh, yeah, next I want to talk about liveness. So I just pause again to see if we have some questions about Nargol. So does it does it does it, um, does it change sort of the trust assumptions somehow? I mean, you have sort of extra data availability type trust assumptions, or. No, it's it's the same trust assumption. We have n validators, f out of f out of which can be Byzantine. Just the the, the proof of availability, it you 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 is n is two f plus one signatures. Um, each signatures each signature is a promise that I stole the data, out of which uh, f is actually honest. F plus one is actually honest, so this f plus one are actually stalling the data. So later I can just. I can ask a quorum and some honest validator will give me the data. And so, okay. And, and it's not, it's not like every node has to store every single thing. Is that right? No, you just store whatever you promised to store. You, you get, yeah, okay. you get it, you sign, you store it. Yeah. Okay. So there'd be maybe a constant factor savings there or something. Yes. Yeah, and but uh, and of course, when we implement it, we need to garbage collect it. I will not store it forever, but uh, this is I think this is too low level details of how we implement the garbage collect there. But yeah, there is some details of how to garbage collect. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so now I want to talk slightly about liveness. So in the asynchronous versions, which is the DAG rider task, the, the asynchronous version of Bullshark, they're all asynchronous protocols. And uh, here, I remember you asked me how I where I take the encodes from. So in the asynchronous version, they are actually not predefined. I actually use one, we actually use randomness, randomness to elect them. And uh, the way it works is that we use threshold signatures and each node of the DAG, we can simply, the validator can simply sign the round number. And then once I have uh, two n minus f nodes in the DAG, I can collect this signature to a threshold signature. I can hash it, and I uh, that is guaranteed that no, like the threshold crypto guarantees that it doesn't matter which of the nodes I deliver, we'll all we'll all we'll all, we will all have the same signature and the same hash, and then we will elect the same uh, encode. So and uh, then if you are familiar with Waba, then it's kind of the same argument, but I'm not I'm not going to go into that. What I do want to talk is about the, the partial synchronous liveness of the, of the partial synchronous version of Bullshark. There, we don't, we don't have randomness. This is a deterministic protocol. So, so, we, so we, need a predefined, we need a predefined leaders. And, uh, and because it's a partial synchronous liveness, and because we know there is, an, there is the FL, FLP results, and so, of course, we, can, we, we, have, to, we have to use timeouts somewhere, somewhere in the system. We, we cannot get away with it. This is, this is an, an impossibility result. And we, we considered two options, and we evaluated two, two options of where, how to use these timeouts. And uh, we ended up, what we ended up doing is uh, using the timeouts directly on constructing the DAG. So I told you before that when I advanced to, to a new round, I first need to deliver n minus f uh, node in the current round. This is still this is the same, but on top of it, we need to add something. So if one of these nodes that I deliver is the encode, 
<laughs> then I can immediately go and continue and uh, continue to the, move to the next round. However, if I didn't deliver yet the, the end call, then I will wait for a timeout to see if I will to, to wait for to deliver this end call for a timeout. And it, when I deliver it, I can immediately move forward. Otherwise, I just move forward when the timeout expires. <laughs> so this is what we ended up doing. And what we compare to is uh, we, actu we actually thought of separating the physical DAG from the logical DAG. From a, from in intuitively, when we thought about it, we thought well, it is a very neat and very clever idea because uh, we will be able to build the physical DAG same network speed, never wait for timeouts, and then just to piggyback uh, the piggyback the virtual DAG on top of the physical DAG. So each node will have one one extra bit saying. Do, uh, am, am I am I belong to the virtual DAG or not? And then the same logic we can implement on the virtual DAG. Once in a while, I say, okay, this is the virtual DAG, and this is, and we will all the the, the consensus that I explained before. We'll uh, we'll use the virtual DAG to do it, and uh, and and then each uh, everything else is the same. It's just we're piggybacking the the virtual DAG on top of the physical DAG. So yeah, as I said before, we, we thought it's a good idea, it's a clever idea, but when we implemented and compared, then the, then we saw it's actually a bad idea. But probably we couldn't we couldn't think about it before we implemented. So and and, and the reason is the, is the following. This is uh, so we we we. We uh, we separate the data dissemination from the from the ordering. So even though we we slightly we may we might slow down slightly on the construction of the DAG because once in a while we wait for the timeout. The data we, we keep streaming in network speed. The data is is like orthogonal to building the metadata. So the only difference here is that if we if we build the DAG slightly slower, then every node will have slightly more um, proof availability, slightly more metadata. But the data behind it will be the same. So the, the actual amount of data that we order will, will, will still be the same. So we are not losing throughput. But on the other hand, when we use this uh, virtual DAG on top of the physical DAG, so say I, I, missed, I, missed, I missed the physical node by, 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 by a little. I, I just, my timeout expires like one millisecond after already I broadcast the physical DAG. So now I need to wait for the next round in order to piggyback my logical my logical node, and I lose this latency. <laughs> this is one. This is the uh, this is one. And the second, in general, what we like, uh, what the insight that we learned from implementing it is that um, building the DAG too fast is not good. We actually want to back pressure a little bit the the the, the DAG because. Because then we need to, the, then the data structure is smaller. We need to, um, the, the in memory, memory is smaller, then less thread in the system are busy, less networking. So it's actually, it's actually good to back pressure it a little bit. Um, okay, this is, was a note about liveness. And now I want to, I want to talk a little bit about uh, implementation and show you some graphs. Quick so, question? Yes, sure. Yeah. So the so the like this VABA kind of trick that you used in the asynchronous case is should I think of that as just like a theoretical interest or is that also kind of practically relevant? A, it is practically relevant because um, because we this is how the the, the asynchronous fallback, fallback work. So huh. it's because everything is local. Right, so it doesn't have any practical complexity. It's just the local algorithm that you use. So, if yeah, if you ask, I can describe in like two, one and two sentence. So the trick is that we we only the randomness we apply from round we, we randomness we, we use the round four for a, for randomness to elect an anchor around one. So this is already after the adversary already committed to the structure of the DAG. So this is some simple combinatorial argument. We, we saw that before we before we choose the randomness, there are n minus f um, n potential nodes in round one that if we elect them, the commit rule will be satisfied. And it doesn't matter, like the adversary can, no matter what the adversary do, there will be this n minus f uh, nodes. The adversary can, can choose what n minus f nodes by like choosing the, choosing the order of the delivery, but no matter what it does, there will be these n minus f uh, nodes that will satisfy the commit rule. So first we wait for the adversary to commit on some set, and then we apply the randomness. So with probability two over three, we will elect an anchor, which is in, in, in this set. And then the commit rule will be satisfied, and we will be able we will be able to commit in order one uh, in order one rounds. That's that's the VABA trick, and 
and it, it and for for the for, and, and it really doesn't matter because it just it's 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 all, it's all local. We don't send any messages. It's just the way we interpret the the DAG. So so you guys are going to implement this because like why not? Is that what I'm hearing? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, it's, it's the system is the same. It's just what is the it's instead of like 200 lines of code on top, on top of novel, we will have 300 300 lines of code on top of novel. So um, why not? Cool. <laughs> yeah okay so right, is the threshold signature overhead uh negligible mm. I'm sorry, i guess like how often do we have to do like extra overhead to have this randomness for anchor selection yeah that is actually a that is actually a very 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 good question because every time we change the validator set we'll need to do a new a new setup and um yeah, and we we have some ideas of how to do it, but uh, it's we didn't implement it yet. So we actually, yeah, this is actually team for all your question as well. If we will, if we we think it's gonna work, but if it doesn't gonna work, so we'll not be able to do the asynchronous fallback. This is a this was a very very good question. Yeah, so but we think we know how to do it to rotate the keys every every time we we reconfigure and. Uh, yeah, if it's gonna work, then we use then we will use the asynchronous version. Otherwise, we will not be able to. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. I actually forgot about it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so let's talk a little bit about implementation. So we've written everything in Rust. We are using a real networking, real storage, real cryptography, and you can find everything uh, in Alberto's uh, GitHub. We use a uh, geo distributed setups and on AWS, <laughs> and this is this is this is a latency throughput uh, graph. Now, for which of you, uh, each of you that is not familiar with the latency throughput, this is how we measure the peak the peak throughput, the peak performance, the peak throughput. So we keep increasing the the load, and then we keep increasing the throughput until the latency ex ex explodes like this is the knee point this is the point we can we cannot increase the load anymore we the, and this is actually the point that we are interested in this this knee points is actually the the, the perform this is the peak performance of the of the protocol <laughs> so we compared we compared task and bullshark to two versions of hot stuff <laughs> First, the vanilla hot stuff. Uh, here we can see the the the, the, the throughput is 18,000 18, transactions per second. Then we all, we actually implemented a, a, our version of hot stuff, an improved version, where we where we decouple data dissemination from the metadata, um, and then the, the the hot stuff only only proposed digest of the data that we stream, and then we we improve performance by a lot. But still not as good as Task and Bullshark, and we can see the Task has slightly better throughput, but Bullshark improved latency because like um, less less rounds. <laughs> and for we also evaluated the performance under faults, and here we can see that Hot Stuff even our implement improved implementation of Hot Stuff suffers while Task and Bullshark are still performing pretty well. Yeah, and just to to conclude this talk, so so everything I just I described today is available. The papers are available. If you wanna if you wanna read an uh, extended version, extended summary of the papers, we have I have a blog post in uh, decentralized thoughts. I I want to use this opportunity. I think it ties on the call. I want to say that this 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 blog is amazing, and um, yeah, and you can you can check the blog post there. So yeah, that's it. Thank you again. Thank you very much for having me today. Thanks, Sasha. Mm -hmm. So, so a Andy Lewis Pye, who couldn't make the talk, but he, he sent me a question kind of asynchronously. He was wondering about transaction repetition. So he was saying how, you know, as a, as a user, you might want to broadcast your transaction to F plus one different servers to, to avoid sensor resistance, in which case it seems like maybe you could get F copies of the transaction embedded in the DAG and how do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's again, another very good point. Um, so this, in this work, it was out of scope. We did not address this problem in the, none of these papers, but we do have some thoughts of how to do it, some, uh, do, how to solve this duplication. So one, one idea, one idea we think is like a content addressable storage. So um, we will not, we will not store everything. We'll just store that every, just, just thing that we need. And, uh, but 
it's it's not really baked idea yet it's yet another thing that we need to solve yeah that's yeah very good point all right sounds like great oh go ahead it's a good question do you feel like uh, eventually all the projects going to move to this duck based consensus since it's has since it's faster it gets better properties or leader based consensus uh, still still have some advantages I am not. I'm not objective, right? But I. I don't think. I. I think this is strictly better. Yeah. I. All I right. tell you what's the. No. No. What. What. what so if we. I just want to answer to Lela's question. Yeah. yeah one, one point. Yeah. One point that we need to remember when we implement it that we don't need that complicated a little bit the implementation which we don't need in a little base thing, mm -hmm. is that we need to implement an abstraction of reliable communication. Meaning that in order to advance rounds, I need to receive I need to receive n minus f nodes. So there is no uh, there is no notion of uh, timeouts like in a little based. I don't receive if if I have a problem in the networking and the little was good, but just the messages were dropped because uh, some disconnection in the TCP. Right, N no harm is done. Right, we will time out. We will next. We will move to the next reader. We will try again. But here, if we need to implement some reliable communication on top of the TCP, like application level, because if we are not getting n minus f nodes from the previous round, we are stuck. There is no notion of moving forward fine again. We, need, we really need to get them eventually. So this is this is one thing in implementation that we need to take into account when implementing it. All right. Well, Sasha, this was great. Thank you so much. So. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you for having me.